Airing on OffTheHookSports.com. Your home for real news, real opinions, and what really matters about Tennessee athletics. The Off The Hook Podcast at OffTheHookSports.com or Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or wherever you go for your favorite podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, iHeart. Like, share, follow, subscribe. Off The Hook with Dave Hooker starts now. It's exciting. It is SEC Media Days with Chris Landry. I am Dave Hooker, Chris Landry at LandryFootball.com. You will know more about football than you ever dreamed with a simple subscription at LandryFootball.com. Also, Chris is a big part of what we do at Off the Hook Sports, so be sure and like and subscribe if you want to know more about football because Chris will be able to do that for you and his appearances on OffTheHookSports.com. And if you subscribe at YouTube, you'll get sneak peeks. We'll let you know when Chris pops up because it tends to be a couple of days before we put it out there. So you want to be sure and do that. Chris, SEC Media Days is upon us. For, you know, probably not the coach's favorite thing in the world, but for us media types, it's kind of like the unofficial kickoff uh, football season. So it's pretty exciting. It is. And, you know, it's for me, it's kind of a, flipping point i thought it was interesting um i didn't realize it quite honestly that the big 12 decided to kick it off you know the sec is usually the kickoff yeah. point and uh it's the big 12 said oh yeah we'll, we'll get it for well if they keep doing that i mean what are we gonna do have fireworks on july 4th and media day i mean it's just it's interesting though but w- i tell you what happens is once you get back from that and it's just the head coaches and a few players but you really get down into the, the final meetings and your preparation for your, what I call, you know, preseason practice, fall practice. And, you know, because uh, to this point, it's been a lot of camps, you know, and recruiting camps. And now it's more focused towards the season and meetings and preparation for that. Um, I know people might be interested to know that you literally plan out every period of what you're going to do in every practice you adjust it based upon injuries and how well you do in practice for example we may expand period three uh from five minutes to eight minutes or nine minutes based upon we haven't done it very well whereas you know so you may take a couple of minutes out of this practice since you've done this well and may may spend more time on other things but you'd literally start to prepare your practice schedule as an offensive and defensive staff and how, and then you work with one another, you know, what you want to work on. We need to spend a little bit more time on third down, a little bit more time on red zone or whatever. And that gives a practice for both the offense and the defense in certain situations. So you really start to hone in on a lot of that uh, right about now as this, uh, so that, so the, it's nothing to do with the media days, but it is from a timing standpoint, for all of us, it says, hey, they, it's coming right around the corner. The 1st of August is when a lot of practices start. It's on before. Yeah, definitely here. So we knew Hendon Hooker would be one of the quarterbacks that was selected. I want to ask you about the other two guys that will be in Atlanta this week for SEC Media Days. <clears throat> this conversation with Chris Landry is brought to you by The Mattress Place, 22 years on Chapman Highway, Marine Corps veteran-owned. A plus accredited member of the Better Business Bureau, over 225 five star reviews. That's pretty impressive. No gimmicks, just 30 to 70% off top mattresses each and every day. So let's start with uh, Trayvon Flowers, uh, the defensive back position. You know, you kind of have to. There, there, there's some unspoken rules at SEC Media Days, and, and one is – there's three, actually. You lean towards the upperclassmen because they've shown they're going to be there. So you lean towards the seniors, in some cases the juniors that you know are going pro. Um, and then the, the other is that you lean towards an offensive and defensive player. So – Trayvon Flowers is the defensive player. This was not a great defense last year. What is it about Trayvon Flowers that uh, stood out in terms of his play to make him a representative at SEC Media Days? What did you think of him last year? Well, I think I think the the part of it is more of the locker room leader, and I think a lot of that falls into what you're talking about. Guy that's been around a little bit. Um, or, or enough to where his personality is such that um, 
people look up to him in the locker room. I think that has a lot to it as a player. And he's a pretty good tackler. He's very physical. Um, he's got to do a better job with his landmarks and coverage. Uh, stay on top of routes better. I, I, I thought that was some areas he needed to, to improve upon. He plays the ball physically well once when he arrives. But getting his head around quicker comes with better understanding of route concepts, staying on top of routes better. And those are some things he can improve upon. So you, you're right. Got to get a defensive player. A lot of the younger guys – or a lot of the maybe the better players up front or younger guys. And I mean, probably lended more towards a guy that's going to be more of a leader or has been more of a leader on that side of the ball. Tell me what you mean again, because sometimes you do talk over my head. And I mean, that as a compliment landmark uh, position. Uh, yeah, it's a good point. Well, so understanding where you need to be based upon uh, alignment based upon how the receiver releases a lot of times what his problem is. And, and this is where, when you are really outstanding with your technique and positioning, it, it helps you even if you're not the most explosive speedy player, he gets a little bit off on his landmarks, meaning where he's supposed to be in a certain spot. It, it and I'm talking folks, it, it's maybe six inches this way, the foot, turn and I'm, I'm doing this for those that are watching us. This is my foot. You, you, your foot, instead of being, you got it right here and it's supposed to be just like that six inches makes all the difference in the world and in the quickness of your ability to turn. So understanding from an alignment standpoint, where you're supposed to be pre-snap and that allows you to be in good position in anything you do, you got to be in the right position because you're going to have to move. And if you're in a put in the wrong setup position to begin with, sometimes you got to move twice, a double move to get in position. It's kind of like in a baseball bat. You know, one, one of the things you teach baseball players, and you know, a lot of times young guys, when the when the pitch comes, they move the bat back like they're getting ready to turn and swing. Well, that's a wasted movement. You want to get the position to where you can come forward because it's less movement and you're not you're going to be late on the pitch. It's the same thing from a technique standpoint. He's he can improve upon that. And I think that's something that 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 they probably worked on with him. Well, I just shuddered a little bit. That reminded me of how bad I was at baseball. We've we've all got those things that were just no good. I I don't know if I was pulling back or jumping out of the box or what I was doing, Chris, but it wasn't pretty. Uh, I tell you who was pretty last year is Cedric Tillman. And when you talk about a three-star athlete, and I know you don't use those ratings, and they're pretty antiquated, to be quite honest with you, and I don't know that they were ever accurate anyway. So, but that being said, he was uh, overlooked or undervalued by an awful lot of schools. Then he will be one of the visitors here in Atlanta. And here you're talking about, boom, a guy that is one of the better receivers in the SEC. Any, any argument to that? No, I think he's... I think he's uh, exceptionally quick. Um, he's got so much speed. Um, he can really work cornerbacks. And I think defenders, because they have to guard against his vertical speed, this gets defenders turned a little bit. I mean, they, they got, you know, I just talked about position. And they got to got to get those hips turned because because if he goes, I got to be in a better position to stay on top of that rock because he's going to run by me. Because of that, man, does he use that to his advantage. He is so good at planning and driving back on the comeback route. And so if, if you watch it, like when watching film, what I see is, boy, he's driving those guys, and they're turning, and boy, he just comes back. And there's really separation, not only to make the catch, but there's enough separation that makes the catch. And now he's got – the defender has got to come back on him. And, boy, if he can make one guy move, it's, it's Katie bar the door because with the multiple receiver sets, you, you've got to have the safeties coming up in, in coverage a little more. So I, I think he's exceptionally quick, and he uses his speed well. Some guys don't. As he improves his coverage recognition, uh, which is just something that just general, it's not bad at it, he's good at it, but he can get better. And then the other thing is he's, as he develops a more advanced route tree, which in this offense, it's a little bit limited it's just because how they do it, it's more by design. 
as he becomes better at running all the routes on the route tree, he's not only going to be what he is now, an exceptional quarterback uh, receiver that that quarterback that his quarterback just loves in the college game. He's going to be a receiver that quarterback's going to love at the NFL level. I think he's got a really good future if he improves those two things, advance route three and better coverage recognition. So uh, I think he's exceptional, and I think he is a as good of a big play threat as you got at, at receiver in this league when you consider how they use him and what his skill set is. Why do you think he was a mid-range recruit coming out of high school? Well, I think that, um, you know, when you look at him, first of all, and the other thing I didn't mention, and I should have, he is, he was fast and explosive at six, two and a half, six, three, two fifteen. I mean, he's not some smaller guy. I think there is, um, a, and, and I think he has progressed in his change of direction. I think, I think people missed on him personally because he's had pretty good size. Now he's gotten bigger. He's always had pretty good speed, but he's, I think he was very raw. And I think people, you know, for whatever reason, look at guys and they look at the production. And as we've talked before, maybe the elite programs, they want the guy with size, speed and production. I just think that while there were numbers of production in terms of catches, in terms of his quickness and change of direction, I think he's developed that over time and with technique. So I think in some ways he's a little bit of a late bloomer, but his, his size and his speed has always been significant. I've been looking forward to asking this question since we're going to talk about Cedric. So the, the greatest show on turf, um, if you go back to the Rams of the early two thousands, I, I, they were all good. I'm not taking anything away from Isaac Bruce or Marshall Falk or Tory Holt. Okay. None of those guys. I'm not taking anything away from, but still when you have that many good guys and you have that offensive philosophy, the numbers can be slightly inflated. So when you see just Tillman physically matched up in his abilities versus other receivers in the SEC, kind of where do you put him? Where where the where's the grouping? <coughs> Excuse me. Where's the grouping on the top? Sorry, no, sneeze there. I, I think he's a tier one receiver in the league. I think he is the type of receiver that if you put him in a different system. He'd be more of a featured guy, more of a, a go-to guy. I think the other receivers benefit from Tillman. In this system, every receiver benefits from the other. But I think the other guys benefit more from him than, than, than the other way around. I think if he was in another system, um, maybe his numbers, you know, after catching up wouldn't be the same but he would be more of the quote unquote featured guy. He'd be more maybe talked about. So I do think you're hitting on something that in this system you kind of throw in cause, cause I think Holt and, and Bruce were great. Um, they, they were, and I think they would have in any system, but so was Ricky pro, but, but, but he was, but he was productive. <laughs> he wasn't as good, but he benefited. I think Tillman is that, that elite guy that can be, or elite potential guy that other guys can benefit. They got some other good guys around them too, though. So that's going to only make it uh, more proficient for the entire offense. You got to really, you've got to stay on top of this guy. And I think you, you, if you don't help and cheat his way a little bit with the safety, he's going to beat you. And if you do, somebody else is going to beat you down the scene. Well, that's good stuff. Again, brought to you by the Mattress Place, 22 years on Chapman Highway. Again, Marine Corps veteran. Thank you for your service, uh, Steve Crossford. We certainly appreciate it. Amen. And it, it it allows us to do fun stuff like this to talk about football. We appreciate your support business-wise as well. Uh, no gimmicks, just 30 to 70% off every day at the Mattress Place. They are awesome. So for Chris Landry... I'm Dave Hooker. To learn more at LandryFootball.com, your friends will be like, man, where is he getting all this stuff? This guy knows more about football than like uh, anybody I've ever talked to. Well, that's because of uh, your Landry Football 
Sports.com subscription. So this has been a presentation of Off the Hook Sports. As we're in Atlanta, it is SEC Media Days. Obviously, not the College Football Hall of Fame yet. This is my bed and breakfast. We'll talk to you soon. A presentation of Off the Hook Sports.